Hello, my name is Professor Farhad Safezi and I'm the Chief Medical Officer of the ELSA Institute in Zurich, Switzerland. And I'm one of uh, the doctors who started the initial cross-linking technology 19 years ago. My help, my cornea is 215 micron. What can we do? Can we still cross-link such a cornea? Well, until recently the answer would have been no. But after six years of research, we found a way to help patients with very thin corneas. Until now, the official limit in corneal cross-linking was 400 micron. And this is an OCT image of a cornea. You see the cornea from the side and it's extremely thin here in the periphery. How do we do this? How can we cross-link such a thin cornea? Well, we started learning how to deal with thin corneas 12 years ago. And again, this came from our group in Switzerland. We developed a technique called hypoosmolaric cross-linking using special riboflavin that swells the cornea. And a few years later, another group had the idea of putting a contact lens on top of a thin cornea to be able to cross-link. Now, if you look at these two techniques, they were, they were used for a number of years now, but they have major disadvantages for us surgeons. So, in the case of swelling of the cornea, what we do, in fact, is Similar to what you see in the sponge, if you apply a liquid, it increases in size. And this is what we do to the cornea. If the cornea is thinner than 400, we swell it. The swelling works well, but some corneas swell a lot, others don't. So this is really hard during surgery. And in the case of a contact lens, the problem here is that we lose a lot of the effect. This method is roughly 30% less effective than cross-linking without a contact lens. So we had to look for new ways to perform cross-linking in ultra-thin corneas. Now, if you look at these two methods, what do they do? They both try to somehow increase the thickness of the cornea, either by swelling or by putting something on top of the cornea. Well, we went a different way. Instead of trying to adapt the cornea to CXL, we developed a protocol that adapt CXL to the patient's cornea. That makes more sense, but took a few years to develop. So we went through quite a bit of algorithm generation, mathematics, uh, nomograms, and so on. This step took two years and then a clinical study, another three years, to prove that indeed this works very nicely in a series of steps where we, where we remove the epithelium, we apply the riboflavin, we measure the thickness, and in the end, we adapt the time of treatment. This has been published in uh, one of the most reputable journals, the American Journal of Ophthalmology, and the success rate is almost 90%, it's, which is very, very high in these extreme corneas. The entire protocol has been integrated in this machine that allows corneal cross-linking at the slit lamp. This is the CI device by Imagine, and so we have an easy and straightforward way to help patients with ultra-thin corneas. So the answer in 2021 is definitely yes, we can help you even if your cornea is ultra-thin. Thank you for your attention.